Hey, what's up everyone? Danny and Alex here. Today, this video is going to be addressing people who just want to start jiu-jitsu or have just recently got into the sport. Check it out. All right, so before we get started, I would just like to address the fact that there's a lot of misconception between sport jiu-jitsu as well as self-defense in jiu-jitsu, all right? And in my opinion, they're all one and the same. Let me explain for a second. When we talk about self-defense, we're really addressing the fact that we can use some of our knowledge, our techniques, against an aggressor on the street in unarmed combat, right? So that's one example of self-defense. Maybe someone's attacking you with a haymaker punch or grabs you by the neck or grabs your jacket or grabs you from behind. And we need to have some techniques to be able to free ourselves, escape, and you know what? Do the less damage possible to our aggressor. That's jiu-jitsu for self-defense. Now when we talk about jiu-jitsu for sport, the same techniques can be applied. The only difference now is I'm going against a trained opponent who does the same stuff as I do, the same jiu-jitsu. He's just as skilled or almost as. So now some of the techniques that are for self-defense are not going to be as applicable against a trained fighter. So now it's going to become more of a game of what I like to call human chess. Now jiu-jitsu is a uniquely exceptional martial art. Why is that? This is coming from a boxing mixed martial art and Muay Thai instructor. The fact of the matter is this. If I get into a street fight and I start engaging with a fist fight, I got against my opponent, he hits me, I hit him, eventually someone's going down. That's the best case scenario. And that might be you, that might be me. By hitting someone, even if I win the fight, I get in deep trouble. I might even injure severely my opponent. That's if I use boxing, punching, Muay Thai skills. Now if I got into a street fight and I use my jiu-jitsu skills to control my adversary, and I'm able to bring them down to the ground, which is 80% of our game, as a matter of fact, is to always try to take the opponent to the ground. I'm able to control them and subdue them. And that's the beauty of the jiu-jitsu discipline, is that I can use jiu-jitsu skills to control my opponent, nullify his attacks, and then take it to a zone, which is the ground, where I can control him, and weight and strength doesn't have an advantage anymore. So if I'm the aggressor and I'm stronger than Alex, on our feet, he's going to have trouble. But on the ground, that kind of nullifies my strength, kind of equalizes. This is what I call the great equalizer once we get onto the ground. Okay? So that's why I think jiu-jitsu is exceptionally unique in the way that it's great for people that want to use martial arts for self-defense. Because let's face it, no one usually enters a gym and say, hey, I want to learn this martial art because I want to win the worlds or I want to learn this martial art because I want to be the next UFC champ. That's a rare occasion. Most people want to get into martial arts to build self-confidence, self-esteem, and a lot of times maybe someone has been a victim of an aggression in the past and they want to learn jiu-jitsu to have confidence that they can defend themselves if ever anything happens. So today we're going to talk about the jiu-jitsu to someone who's never done it before or even someone who's just got started in the sport. Okay, so it's not a video geared to show you how to do certain techniques. We'll do that later on. Now, when we talk about self-defense, I need to explain maybe one or two examples so you guys get a nice context, okay? So let's say, for example, Alex is an aggressor, and he takes a swing at me, all right? If I don't know how to fight, more than likely, I'll do one of three things. The first one is as he swings, I close my eyes because I'm not used to seeing a punch coming at my face and a common reaction, I know it sounds funny, is people will close their eyes and flinch, right? They'll just freeze up. They don't know and then they get hit and they get knocked out. That's the worst thing you can do, of course. Now the second thing is to try to block, right? So if he punches me, I'm going to try to block and cover myself. Uh, a little bit better of a situation, but it's not exceptional. Now, the best scenario is I don't want to be there when he tries to hit me. So if he tries to hit me now and I'm aware, I'm going to lock myself up against the body of the opponent. So notice how I close the distance. By closing the distance now, I'm negating the power of the opponent. As of if I stayed here, 
and I try to move away and move away, he's going to be following me. And after one, two, or three punches, eventually I might hit a wall or I might end up between two cars, and now he'll be in striking zone. And that's not good for you. So what we're trying to do is negate that. So in jiu-jitsu, I like to teach my students is there's the green zone and there's the red zone. Green means good, red is bad. This is the red zone right here where he's in a distance where he can hit me, I can also hit him, and whoever's fastest is going to connect first, and that's the person who's going to win, right? I don't want to take that chance, all right? I don't know how skilled he is. Now, if I'm here, I'm safe. Now he can't reach me. This is a green zone for me. But I can't stay here for too long because eventually he'll catch up. So the other green zone that I have is also here, when I'm very close to my adversary. Right here, my opponent is clinched against my body, and now there's no more power into his attacks. So remember this, guys. In the striking zone is not a good place to be. Outside is a great place, but even better is eventually I need to close that gap. And this is what we'll do. If he throws a punch, I want to lock myself up, and I keep everything tight against him. Now from this position here, as an example, I want to take the fight to the ground. So watch this. I'll switch my grips and now take my opponent to the mat. Now on the street, there won't be mats. It's going to be asphalt. So when you fall down, which we call side control, but this video is for the beginners, is I don't want to stay here too long. It's not the best position to be. Why is that? Because he could still hit me. Once the person hits the ground, he's going to try to scramble back up and he's also going to try to hit your face. So when I'm in this position here, what I need to do is control the legs and control the bicep. By controlling his bicep, he's not hitting me. And now from here, I want to come back up to what we call the knee on belly position. Knee on belly position is a better position on the street than the side control. Why is that? Because in side control, my knees are touching the asphalt. I'm going to scrape my knees on the asphalt. A lot of jitsu, sport jitsu people don't realize this is side control is great. I'm immobilizing the person. And what's great about jiu jitsu is also the fact that when you train and you roll on a daily basis against other jiu jitsu practitioners, you learn to control people who know what they're doing and you gain that skill advantage. Now, if you ever fought on the street against an untrained opponent, a good jiu jitsu fighter against an untrained opponent on the street is almost like you grappling with a child. They don't know what's going on. You can almost do what you want with them. And eventually you'll be able to control and subdue them very quickly. But the thing is, when you're on the street, you're not in a comfortable area. You don't have comfortable territorial area in the sense that there's no mats underneath you. So you have to keep this in mind. If you never fought for real, you didn't realize this. So now, if I'm on my knees in a scramble, I'm going to start to scrape my elbows, my forearms, and my knees on the asphalt. So this is not the best place to be. So that's why I said the moment we're here, I'm controlling the far side arm because when he doesn't know what he's doing, he's not going to be framing and trying to recover the guard now. He's going to be trying to hit me. So even though I got to here, he's going to be hitting my head. So I need to control the far arm. And now he's not hitting me in the face anymore. And now from here, we'll pop to what we call the knee on belly position. This is great now because my knees are not on the ground. I can hit him, he can't hit me, and I also have collar chokes to the neck. I can go to the arm lock. If he starts to turn away from me, turn here, see I'll follow and start to take the back. All right? There's a lot of positions that you can do when you're training jiu-jitsu. Like I said, thank you Alex, this is not a video to teach you the subtleties of all the techniques we do. It's just an overview to understand the self-defense aspect that we want to use when we do jiu-jitsu, okay? So sometimes we'll just clinch and lock up. We see the opponent coming in. As I clinched and locked up here, now sometimes we don't want to take him down. Maybe I'll just go to the back. Now control him here. From behind him, I'm also in a great position standing up. Now I can just lock up here and go for the neck and start to attack the neck or take him back down to the ground once again from behind him. As you can see, there's a lot of situations that we can transfer our jiu-jitsu skills in a self-defense situation. When we talk about sport now, this thing changes. Sport, there's no hitting. 
So if I'm in a tournament, in a jiu-jitsu tournament against Alex, he's not allowed to strike me anymore. So I don't have to worry about punches. So when we hit the ground, the concept and the mentality of our techniques is gonna change slightly, okay? Here's an example. If he's on his back, this is considered Alex playing guard. I'm considered trying to pass his guard from here. I'm the guard passer now. So my goal, it's not about punching and hitting anymore. Now it's a tournament. This is why we call it sport jiu-jitsu. So my goal is to pass and clear his leg. So let's say, for example, I was able to do this. When I got to here, I cleared his legs. Now his goal, when he's on the bottom, is going to be to bring the legs back in. So we call this recovering the guard. As he's in this position now, if he sits up and he grabs a hold of my collar and my sleeve, he does what we call a sweeping position. So from here, he'll have the sweep position. Now he'll end up on a better position, which is the mount. And now if I start to push and extend, he has the arm bar attacks. That's a submission hold. Thank you, Alex. So as you can see, sport jiu-jitsu now is in relation to try to improve your position and put yourself in a more dominant force of attack to get the submission. Now, although I, earlier in the video I did mention that self-defense and sport, they go hand in hand, the sequence we just talked about just now could be well applied in a self-defense situation as well. It's just that now you have to be aware that there could be strikes, the guy could be coming at you in the eyes and scratching your eyes. He could even have a weapon. So self-defense will have a different context in our techniques. But overall, the techniques will be the same. Now, we're going to talk about the next element of jiu-jitsu. is the standing part, the stand-up of jiu-jitsu. I did a video in the past about certain things we do in a stand-up. But just an overview today. Um, if you're starting out or just inquiring, I call these the inquiring minds of the sport and you're watching this video, sometimes maybe you're a parent who has a child who practices jiu-jitsu, and uh, you're wondering certain things, right, the concept. So this video is really geared at clarifying why we do certain things, okay? When I'm in a stand-up position now, especially for tournaments or sport jiu-jitsu, my goal is to take him down. Because as I said earlier, in jiu-jitsu, 90% of the techniques we do are gonna be on the ground. Although there are some submissions we'll do on our feet, 90% are going to be when we hit the floor. Now we have total dominance of our opponent and we can better position ourselves in a proper angle to attack the limbs. And when I take submissions, we're talking about attacking the neck, chokes and strangulations. We're talking about the shoulders, the arms, all right, the arm locks and arm bars, wrist, all of the joints. We have the knee bars, we have leg locks and foot locks, right? All of these submission holes are tactics in order to apply leverage using our body weight in a proper angle where we can break the limb. But in a tournament, we're gonna resist breaking the limb. Of course, we're just gonna apply the technique with enough resistance to have our opponent tap, which means mate, and that means stop. That means I give up, and that's how you win the match. Now, we have to get to the ground. So some of the tactics we're gonna be seeing is maybe a double leg like I did. So maybe I'm here, I'm trying to shoot. And from here, I'll try to bring Alex to the ground. Maybe it will be using a single leg position. Um, another tactic to engage the fight is when I don't get a chance to do that or my opponent doesn't, maybe we had grips first. And uh, maybe he decided to simply pull guard from here. And now he's playing the guard position. A lot of positions can be applied when we do jiu-jitsu. To start the match and take the match to the ground, we can use takedowns. He can sometimes pull guard, initiate. A lot of people who, to the untrained eye, see pulling guard as a weakness. They'll see, like, why is he lying on his back to start the match? Well, when you develop skills in jiu-jitsu, you'll see that the secret weapon is always the guard. There's many techniques we can do from there where we can reverse the position and also attack submissions. One more thing is, let's say, for example, I swept Alex from here, boom. That's two points. I took him down to the ground and I score points. When we talked about sport jiu-jitsu, we have to score the points. We improve on our positions and we have an additional point system. So if I take him down with a single, double, or a throw, hip throw, shoulder throws, or a sweep, 
Now, if I control my opponent, I'll receive two points. And that's going to give me a great advantage. Why? Because I've improved my position. Now I can start the match. Now, sometimes in Jiu-Jitsu academies, you don't get a chance to practice the stand-up part. Like in our gym, we have a huge facility. So I stress a lot of the standing techniques. I use a lot of judo in my jiu-jitsu. I use a lot of wrestling in my jiu-jitsu. I like to blend those styles because I've trained in those styles in the past. I like to use a lot of the uh, techniques within our jiu-jitsu program. And I teach my students always to practice the stand-up piece as well. All right? But sometimes when it gets crowded or some academies that are smaller, you'll see this a lot where we'll both be kneeling positions. And from here, our match will start from a kneeling position. This is very common. So if you see this, it's simply for two reasons. Number one, sometimes it gets very crowded. Number two, um, there's not a lot of space. And number three, it's to prevent some injuries. Okay, sometimes when there's a lot of people on a mat, if we start to throw, we get out of bounds and we start to throw and the person will fall on someone else who's practicing beside us. The other thing too is, even if we have the mat to ourselves is, if I'm throwing Alex, sometimes we fall in an awkward position, we didn't break fall in time, we might cause an injury. From this position here, whatever throw, sweep, or pulling guard we're gonna do, there's almost zero chance of us getting injured from this height. Okay, so from here maybe I'll just step across, and from here, just pull right to half guard, right? Maybe he's gonna shoot from the kneeling position, while I'm here, he's gonna shoot, and drive for a takedown. The same techniques can be applied whether we're standing or kneeling, right? Sometimes from here, we talked about submissions, we can also go from here where I'll do a snap down, and that's a choke. The submission holes can be applied from the standing position as well, since we're talking about stand-up. Maybe he has a nice grip here, and I just control the wrist as I walk in, there's a wrist lock. It's quick submissions. People don't expect this. Maybe I'm controlling inside the collar when I start the match, and I deep collar on the opposite side, and I could choke him from a standing position. This will happen more by surprise, because people know collar chokes, and it's harder to apply on a standing position, but it can happen, right? Same thing if I use a snap down, we turn to this side, as I snap down, boom. From here, we have our guillotine choke. Okay, there's a lot of things we can do from the stand-up, but like I said, in future videos we're going to talk about details of how we apply certain techniques for self-defense as well as for sport. This is just for people who are just starting out, like I said. People are wanting to start jiu-jitsu or people are just starting out one week of training or two weeks of training. You get into a jiu-jitsu academy, you buy your gi, no one teaches you how to tie that belt on your first day, you're thrown to the mats, and then the class starts. It's an all levels class. And then warm ups get going. You're trying to keep up the pace with all of the other senior students. And then the professor teaches one or two or sometimes three techniques of the day, not necessarily geared for your level of techniques. And then at the end of the class, everyone rolls. And you have no idea. You see people scrambling on their backs, on top positions, tapping out. You don't necessarily have an idea. You've watched the UFC, you've watched Jiu-Jitsu on videos, but watching and doing are two different things. So now you're alive in the action, you get paired up with someone else, and even though the guys might go slow on you, you still have no clue what's happening and what you should do. So my intention with these next videos is just to address a few things, not to help you necessarily with techniques, but just to make you comprehend a little bit more what's happening in Jiu-Jitsu academies. Because I've been doing martial arts for a long time, and trust me, it's a sad thing. Alex has traveled a lot with me to many Jiu-Jitsu academies around the world, and let me say one thing, it's a rarity to see great structured Jiu-Jitsu schools, okay? And it's actually, it's a sad thing. It's a sad thing that I've witnessed I've um, seen a lot of beginners attend jiu-jitsu classes in some very famous jiu-jitsu academies across North America, and um, these people are not really taken care of. They're just thrown into the class, and hopefully they catch on quick enough to be able to get proficient enough to be able to endure some of the stuff that's being applied on them. And the goal of jiu-jitsu is to help people, because guys, the bottom line is, Jiu-Jitsu and martial arts were not created for the tough guys. The tough people are already tough, strong enough, and know how to fight. 
martial arts at baseline were designed to help individuals who are smaller, weaker, how to defend themselves against bigger people. That's where martial arts came from. So when someone just joins an academy or martial arts studio and they're thrown into the class just like that, it's, it's a sad thing, right? So I don't have any words for that. That's not how I like to operate. I like to change the system. But unfortunately, I don't have control about how people do things. But I've seen it happen over and over again. And that's why on my YouTube channel, Alex and I nonstop, we keep on teaching the people who are just starting out, who are just starting out in jiu-jitsu, all right? Um, the people are hardcore jiu-jitsu fanatics. These people are looking for the latest De La Hiva sweeps. Well, that's not who I'm trying to target. I'm trying to target the people that are just starting out, people who are training with me, who want to see a little bit more of stuff for beginners. So guys, thanks a lot for watching our video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel because in the next couple of videos, we're gonna be talking about more positions that we have in jiu-jitsu and how they serve itself, all right? It's gonna to attach to what we just discussed in this segment, all right? So leave us a like and we'll catch you in the next video. Take care.